A little boy's dream seldom becomes a man's reality. However, this little guy with sticks in hand and a drum he could hardly lift grew into a musical legend in his own time. Buddy Rich is quite a man, a possessor of a black belt in karate, a winner over a heart attack, a musician's musician who lives life at his very fullest. Buddy Rich is our guest commentator today as we visit Madison Square Garden for the Oriental World of Self-Defense. Amazing feats, skill, and concentration, including a match between a karate champion and a kung fu champion. Today on Wide World of ABC Sports Cameras, we're in Madison Square Garden for what can only be described as a real happening. We've been there many times before to cover events, but we were covering the Oriental World of Self-Defense a gathering of students, masters, teachers, just the curious at Madison Square Garden that numbered over 19,000 people. And some of the demonstrations we saw absolutely amazed us. For instance, you're looking at Ronald Duncan. He's a teacher and a master's, and this is his student. He's placed a cucumber between the chin and the chest of the student. He has a short samurai sword. The slightest miss could have been fatal. People gasp. We look at it again in slow motion. A razor sharp sword. Tiger Kim and other masters shattering boards with bare knuckles. We saw women breaking bricks with their bare hands. And we saw Mr. Lin of Washington, D.C., also a masters, with a kung fu demonstration using Chinese swords. Again, the slightest slip could have meant disaster. What amazed me perhaps the most was Moses Powell, another master and a teacher, on one finger. Unbelievable, yet we saw it happen. We've shown segments of the Oriental world of self-defense in past wide world of sports, and I've had the privilege of working with this man whose music, or if you will, the sound of drums you heard through our introduction. I'm speaking, of course, of the one and only Buddy Rich. And Buddy, well, let's take a look at some of the other things that we saw that particular day. And just, uh, we're picking them out from different areas, different uh, things that happened over the course of the day. For instance, you're looking at Frank DeFelice. Take the shot of the Grand National Champion, Joe Hess, who weighs 230 pounds, right in his chest. Well, that would have knocked me right out of the arena. That's full contact. That's all 235 pounds. Hear it again, slow motion. <laughs> you would think again. it would just shatter his test. I was there. This was real. You could hear the thud. It was yes. incredible. Ah. Now, here's Terry Oki, Higa. Now, this two before is going to be shattered over his forearm. Again, concentration, I guess, buddy. Yes, sir. It's concentration, and also, it's the great, um, there it is, ah. two by four. <laughs> it shows great respect for the master. He has all of the, all of the confidence in the world that will allow him to do that. And slow again, motion. as you can always see so much more clearly, in slow motion, the force two before shattering. Now this one coming up, I, I just really didn't believe. Ernest Hyman is going to break a thousand pounds of ice, bare hands. One strike. He'll go right through it. Tough way to mix a drink. <laughs> the ice man go it. There he goes, his concentration. There it is. Oh. And believe me, that brought the crowd of over 19,000 fans right to their feet. Let's look at it again in slow motion. This concentration is fullest. And a way to fix a daiquiri. It's amazing. Hard to believe, yet we saw it happen. It's amazing. 
I mentioned that it was many hours of demonstrations from the Oriental world of self-defense, and we're going to take a look at some of the other forms in just a moment. During the course of our coverage of the Oriental world of self-defense in Madison Square Garden, we saw the different masters from around the world performing their own art forms. We also saw the classes of these masters. For instance, this is the class of William Chen, performing a soft kung fu known as Tai Chi Chuan. Beautiful and graceful, the movements are taken from animal life and bird life. We're watching here, Gujaru Karate. Chuck Merriman is the master here. We're watching his young people learning Japanese form of karate, the hard and the soft kind of blocking, the shoulder block, the side block that these young people are demonstrating here. They're doing a beautiful job. We're watching here Shotokan karate with George Cofield. This is also a form of Japanese karate, using the long stick weapon as opposed to the short stick. Here he hits his man in the stomach and takes him out with a kick, and we'll just finish him off with the sticks. Very interesting. This is really wild. Akito, George Richard Bow is doing the work here taking the man blindfolded, taking the weapon out of his hand, and getting him down and stabbing him with a knife. Uh, we're watching here Kempo Karate. Teruyuku Higa is the master. This is an Okinawan form of karate, taking the weapon, breaking his wrist, as we see here. Ernest Timer is demonstrating the use of the nunchuck sticks. Originally, they were used as farm tools. Here he's lying down, warding off attackers with a stick. He's the world champion, and he's a fantastic uh, karate fighter, as you can see here. Marvelous. This next form is ninjutsu. Uh, Ronald Duncan is the master here, fighting two men with samurai swords, taking them both out, as you can see here, using the long samurai sword, and then taking his head off and knocking him down. Obviously, he's the winner. It's a very exciting match. And I was also impressed at the coverage of the Oriental world of self-defense, so the great conditioning of some of the athletes. And Fantastic. Uh, and the discipline, too, yes. up to a point. Right. I mean, most of the bouts and the different matches we had, uh, well, they were supposedly controlled, but now this one match between a Kung Fu national champion and a karate national champion got a little out of control. On your right is little John Davis. Now, he's has won many national titles as a karate expert, and on your left is Tyree Cassell. Uh, he has won many national championships as a Kung, Kung Fu, Fu expert. Right. The referee there was Johnny Kuhl, a former German karate champion. And it was supposedly to be controlled, right, buddy? Right. Well, you're not really supposed to make full contact. The art of this whole uh, fight is to see how close they can come without really hurting each other. But I think they lost that attitude, uh, as we'll see later on in the round. I think they really get into some very hard contact. Almost instantly. There it is. <laughs> right there. That's a new dance called Help. But he quickly the difference between uh, karate as practiced on the left by Little John and Cassell on the right, Kafu. Right, well, as, as we watch, you'll see that the Kung Fu fighter is a more fluid fighter. Most of his motions are continual, whereas the Kung, the karate fighter is kind of more reserved. He takes more time in, in planning his punches and his kicks. We watch the uh, Kung Fu fighter. He's constantly moving, as we see. He gets off, 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 up on the deck and immediately starts in on the attack, as we see here. I think this is where he throws a right foot at him. Or is it left? There it is. It's a left foot. He starts the attack. Well, They're marvelously conditioned. The sound on the left, and is everything sort of a flowing, continuous motion? Yes. And with the karate fighter, Davis on the right, he sort of takes his time and decides where he's going to punch and where he's going to kick. They're both marvelous masters, as, as you see here. They have to be in fantastic condition. That's a beautiful kick, took him right down. Keep in mind, too, that just one little miscalculation, and this was controlled, but one little miscalculation could have been a broken jaw, broken neck, anything. Absolutely. Easy. Ooh, there you, you can see right there, he really stepped on his face. <laughs> but they get right up again. It's amazing the kind of punishment that they can take. <laughs> if this were all out, buddy, it, it would end in... Uh, it would have been over all yes. If it had been all out contact, one of these people would have just been wiped out. Mm. Oh, he almost caught him with the left hand. See, the Kung Fu fighter's always moving. He's always got something going. 
down. As he fell, did you notice that both feet were kicking? Mm. Instantly into a, a defensive position. Immediately. Little John Davis, 25 to win him. Little John Davis. Also, at least for this match, the champion of the day is karate over Kung Fu. At least for this match. Little kid over my shoulder, well, about a half a century ago, was keeping a whole lot of people up over in Brooklyn. Right. He, grew, he grew up to be this. Kind of amazing uh, man on my right, Buddy Rich, uh, world-renowned as perhaps the greatest drummer of all time. And, Thank you, uh, Frank. Very interesting individual in so many ways. And, Buddy, we talked about your black belt. We talked about the, your 12 years uh, in karate. But what motivated you in the first place to get started? I think health was the number one object. Uh, doing the kind of work that I do on the road constantly, I never had a chance to really get into any kind of physical endeavor, right? I used to do one-nighters. We do 30 one-nighters in a row. That just involves the driving and getting to the job. I had to do something to get myself back in physical shape. And uh, I have a friend of mine that's on the police force in Chicago who was into karate. And I, he asked me if I would like to come down and observe what they do, which I did. I got into, into karate with him, and I've been studying ever since. I now study with Aaron Banks here in New York City at the New York uh, Karate Academy. How often would you take a workout? Uh, there's a picture of Aaron Banks looking over his shoulder, by oh, the way. Oh, yes, Dr. Death, I call him. <laughs> How often do you work out, buddy? When I'm in New York, I work out just about every day with Aaron. And when I'm on the road, I try to find the various local dojos where I may be able to work out for an hour or two before the job. And it keeps me really uh, in great shape. We had a film crew uh, over at the Academy the, uh, the other night taking a look at you, working with Aaron Banks. And oh, yes. What concerned me maybe more than anything else uh, when I saw the film was the fact that there's a, quite a risk in, in ripping up the fingers, as we're going to see as we take a look at you and Aaron going through your exercise. All right. Ish. All right, now, buddy, yes. you will take a formal stance and you will throw at my head. I will do the blocking. Okay? Right. Formal stance. Hey. One, two, two three, three. Ha. All right, look. Now I'll come to you. Right. Here we go. One, two, two three, three. Ta. All right, all right. Middle oh. block. Middle block. All right. All right. All right. Come on. One, ha. two, three, three. Ta. All right, stay there. I come to you. Right. Don't lean forward now. Keep your back straight. Yes. Right. One. Yes. Middle, middle, middle. That's not right. Okay, so you've got to do your middle block. That's right. right. So throw a punch. Throw a punch. Ta! This way. Right. You hold it up. All right. Just here we go. Hey! Yeah! Ta! Yeah! Ta! Breathe. That's right. One more time. Come on. Last time. Okay. That's very good. Grab my wrist. All right. I grab your wrist. Left or right? Uh, well, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Ten! Oh! Okay, oh. try it again. Try it again. Sorry about that. All right, we're waiting. Ten! Now, take Ten it. Ten down! Ah. Ah. Hey! 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 Get up. Pick up sticks. <laughs> Well, that's what I meant about being concerned about your hands. I mean, you need them so, uh, so desperately in your profession. Uh, you really hit him. Yeah, I really hit him, and I was really worried about that, too, because you're not supposed to really lose control like that. And I was very worried that he was going to be a little angry at me. But he's a beautiful man, and he just understood that uh, I don't like him, you know. You know, buddy, uh, you are an amazing person. Uh, you've had a heart attack. You're 57 years old. You're, uh, you've had back surgery, uh, yet you look like a kid. You take part in this. Uh, do you think that it really is uh, giving you this uh, almost uh, younger than real sort of uh, attitude towards life? I think that's exactly right, Frank. I had a heart attack in 1959. I was in the hospital for a couple of months, and the doctor in those days said that I would never play drums again. I got out of the hospital. I was off about six months. I went back to work, and I stayed uh, working for the next several years until I had a back operation. I had two ruptured discs removed from my back. And again, I was warned about playing. I went back to work about uh, three weeks after getting out of the hospital, and I haven't been off since. And I think that, uh, again, it's the mind over matter situation with me. I don't allow pain to invade my body. I don't think about it. There are some nights when I go to work when I really don't feel like going to work. Once I get up behind the drums on the bandstand, all pain leaves me, all anxiety leaves me, and I just love what I'm doing. I love playing music as much as I love karate. I love the challenge of both, and I'm very happy doing both. We're with the courtesy of WXXI in Rochester. Let's take a look at Buddy Rich at his very best, and he is the very best.
Wow, that little kid really grew up. Thank you for being with us, buddy, and we'll see you at Buddy's Place. The executive producer of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Rune Arlange. Moscow Gymnastics, produced by Eleanor Rieger. Skating, an oriental world of self-defense, produced by Doug Wilson. Our director in Oakland was Larry Cam. Our director in Madison Square Garden, Lou Volpicelli. Coordinating producer of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Dennis Lewin. Associate directors, Carol Letty and Norm Samet. Technical directors, Vern Hendrickson, Dave Fee, and John Broderick. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United, offering more wide-body 747 and DC-10 friendships to more cities across your land. The spirit of friendship service, it's catchy. Today's program was pre-recorded. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport. The thrill of victory. And the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This has been ABC's Wide World of Sports.